All right, so we're starting this new chapter on social psychology. Um, here's the first installment. Learning objectives for this portion, <clears throat> talking about aggression, uh, talking about groups, um, advantages of groups, and then some disadvantages as well, things that can um, make them uh, detrimental, things like diffusion of responsibility, groupthink, and we'll end with, um, on a high note, uh, about uh, altruism. So aggression. Um, this is defined as actions intended to harm another. There are um, well-characterized gender differences um, in aggression. Um, violent crimes, what, what percentage of violent crimes do you think are committed by men versus women? Probably have a feel that maybe it's a you know higher percentage that are committed by men. I might not realize that it's this high though. 80% of violent crimes are committed by men. What about uh, murders? 90% uh, of murders are committed by men. Okay, so men um, tend to be more aggressive and um, higher testosterone levels are believed to underlie this. Um, it's not that women never aggress though. Um, um, and, but when they do, they, there also tend to be differences in how um, that aggression is manifest. So men are more likely to aggress in ways that cause physical harm, um, more responsive to attacks on their status. Um, someone with unrealistically high self-esteem is actually more likely to be aggressive because um, they're more likely to perceive <clears throat> um, things like insults um, as, as an affront to their social status. Um, many violent crimes, that's, that's been cited as the, as the reason, um, the, or the, the motive, the, the, the trigger, um, some kind of um, contest to save face. Women are more likely to aggress in ways that cause psychological harm. Okay, so things like exclusion, spreading rumors. Um, so um, groups, um, a group is just like it sounds, and just like we talk about it in common language, a collection of people who have something in common that distinguishes them from others. If you are um, the group that you belong to, that's um, your in-group, and groups that others belong to that you don't, that's the out-group. Um, we almost always favor members of our group, um, and sometimes the distinctions between groups can be completely meaningless. Um, when I've taught this course in person, Sometimes I just divide the room in half, you know, your group A, your group B. Um, and that even a distinction like that um, is enough to lead to group favoritism, favorit um, favoring the in-group versus the out-group. There are advantages to, to forming groups. Um, it's been uh, very beneficial for us as humans. Um, we, uh, uh, we've accomplished a lot by cooperating and forming groups tends to minimize the risk of cooperation. Um, we have common goals, um, it, it helps to foster trust among group members, and it, it, it's good for our health. Um, we're social creatures, um, we thrive when we have a lot of social support, and we tend to be very unhealthy and have a lot of psychological problems if we're in isolation and if we are excluded. So some disadvantages of groups though. Um, one is this phenomenon of the diffusion of responsibility. If you have a bunch of people um, in a group, if you're surrounded by a bunch of people, you may feel diminished responsibility for actions um, when everybody else is acting in the same way. Okay, so um, classic example is, you know, in a, on a busy street, uh, somebody is unconscious on the ground and sometimes people will just walk by and, and not do anything to help. And they, they're, if it, if they were just by themselves, they would feel more responsibility, but that, that responsibility tends to be diffused across the whole group. Um, so a lot of people will just pass by and there's differences in and this ex experiments like this have been done a lot. Um, there's differences in how often people will stop or how quickly people will stop. If it's a female versus a male, um, if the person is white versus non-white, um, there's lots of factors that go into this, but, um, <clears throat> but people are, are less likely to stop or take longer to stop. It takes longer for somebody to stop if they're in a group. Groupthink. 
<clears throat> this is another disadvantage. This is the tendency um, of a group to try to find um, harmony. And so um, trying to reach a consensus, a uh, consensus of idea, uh, of ideas um, within the group. And oftentimes you'll have, um, you know, a majority of the group that agrees, and there's maybe a few people in the group who are still a little uneasy, okay? Um, and sometimes they will just conform to the group, uh, the dynamics of the group, the ideas that the um, the group has formed, just to find harmony, to, to avoid um, disturbing the waters. Um, altruism. Okay, this is a um, uh, thing that humans do, um, and a lot of species do, actually. Um, that um, is a good thing. <laughs> um, reciprocal altruism is something practiced by um, humans and lots of other species. Um, benefiting, engaging in some behavior that benefits another with the expectation that that'll be returned. You know, kind of, you'll, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours later. Genuine altruism seems to be uniquely human. Okay, so that's helping others with no expectation of benefit um, often at great risk um, to yourself. Um, there, the example from the textbook um, is um, a man who uh, jumped on the tracks of a subway to save somebody who had fallen in because of an epileptic seizure. Um, basically, he <clears throat> um, kind of held him down so that um, the train could pass over both of them with just about an inch to spare. So he saved both their he saved his life uh, at great risk to his own, um, and so that would be considered genuine altruism, whereas reciprocal altruism uh, would be expecting some some benefit. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'll post links to this video and this other video um, in the uh, um, description of the video on YouTube. Um, January 20th, 28th, 1986, um, you can see a video of what happened that day. And then this is a dramatization of what happened the, uh, the evening before. Um, so I encourage you to, to watch those two videos. It's a great illustration of groupthink. Okay.